Howdy folks. In this quick video, we're going to review the data models that we're going to be using in the next couple chapters when we are talking about the elements. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into that. I'm here in summaryqueries.xlsx and I'm in the models tab. And these are the three data models that we're going to use for the next couple chapters. You will notice that they are quite small and that is the whole idea. Uh, when we get over to the patterns chapters, we're going to have to use a bigger model that is a bit more realistic. But here, when we're just trying to see how the elements work, we're going to use these models because they're so small that I don't have to ask you to imagine what the tables look like. You can see the table uh, entirely on one page, including all the temp tables we spent off of these. So um, the first data model is this micro model, and uh, it contains exactly one physical table called micro. This is, uh, these are sales transactions for, you can imagine, a restaurant. Uh, for each transaction, we've got which shift is it? Is it lunch? Is it dinner? Uh, what type of transaction? Uh, is, are people taking the food to go or are they sitting down to eat? Uh, and also, how many units uh, did they buy and what was the price per unit? Okay. So this is the very simplest one. This is the tiniest version that we've got. Uh, we'll only use this once or twice. More often, especially in the early chapters, we're going to be using this mini data model. So in this data model, it has exactly one physical table again, no relationships, nice and simple, right? Uh, and that physical table is called mini, right? And it's the exact same table as over here, except we've added a few uh, columns. So here again, it's, it's uh, transactions in a restaurant. We've still got the shift. We've still got the type. Now we have a dish. Uh, what did people order? Did they get pasta? Did they get a burger? Did they get salad? Uh, in addition to a price per unit column, we also have a cost per unit column, right? So this is the one that we will be using most often when we learn about the elements all the way up until we get into the second half of the relationships, right? Uh, when we start learning about relationships, we're still gonna use this model because it's nice and simple. Uh, but when we have to move and understand how, or how um, filter revising works given relationships, well, we need a data model that has relationships. So we're gonna move over to this donation model. This uh, data model has three physical tables in it, dim type, dim date, and fact donate. So this is a, um, a data model that shows us information for a, uh, uh, a charity of sorts, right? So people give donations to the charity, uh, they, they give a certain amount, $100, $200, and sometimes they get matching amounts, maybe their company matches it, maybe some other organization matches it. Uh, but for every single donation, right, uh, there's a date that that donation happened on and a type of donation, right? Now the type corresponds to these four different types over here in dim type. Uh, we either got a one-time check donation a one-time credit card donation, a recurring credit card donation, or a recurring bank number donation, right? And we connect uh, these numbers to these categories based on these two columns, type ID to type ID. So we have a relationship right there. That is a one to many relationship. Uh, all these type IDs are unique over here, which is why it's the one side of the relationship. And uh, each one of those type IDs could appear many, many times for all the different uh, donations that happen, which is why this is the many side of the relationship. Likewise, each donation uh, has a date associated with it, and that date is associated with these categories in the dim date table. So for each date, we've got that date's month, uh, the day type, is it a business day, is it a weekend, and the day of the week, is it Friday, Saturday, or Sunday? Uh, so apparently we haven't been in business very long, only three days, uh, but the whole idea here is to keep these nice and small, which is why uh, this date table only has three days worth of data in it, right? And again, we've got a relationship between these two tables based on date to date, right? Uh, so this is the one side of the relationship. Uh, each one of these rows is an actual date, right? So all of these values are unique. And over here on the fact table, right, uh, this is the many side of the relationship because on a single day, we can have multiple donations like that one and that one both occurred on the 30th. Okay, so uh, I could talk more about this, but I really want to get into more of the fun stuff. So let's go ahead and stop talking about this and hop over to the next video.